Uh, I'm going to start just with a couple of things. One is uh, welcoming President Murty to uh, Oregon State. Excited to get a chance to get a, to know her, work with her. Really, um, really fired up about that. And also want to thank President Johnson for uh, really doing a phenomenal job for a, a year and a half transition. Huge supporter of, of athletics and did some great things for our university. And so I want to thank her for her service and really her support of uh, Oregon State Athletics. Uh, after watching the game, oh, just like some bad, I thought offensively, you know, uh, had some explosive plays early, which we needed to create, which was great. Got the crowd into it uh, with the lead and things. But obviously in the second half, we got a lot to clean up. Um, just self-inflicted on the penalty end. We got to be better with our technique, decision-making a couple times. Chance got to find a way to do some better things with the ball. We got to carry the ball better. Uh, from the backfield in regards to the thing going on in the ground. You know, defensively, there's a lot to like. I thought the effort, uh, the physicality uh, was there. Um, but there's some uh, things containing the quarterback. Got to be able to adjust in game. You know, obviously planned on one quarterback, got to another one, and weren't quick enough to make some adjustments there. So a bunch to learn. You know, on the special teams in, I was really pleased. You know, you look at a lot of home, you know, openers across college football, how many special teams issues there are. thought we were pretty sound and solid on that end. You know, a few guys that don't make the stat book that really stood out. Silas Bolden made some huge blocks down the field. Coletto, third and one, takes it for a touchdown. Well, that's all created by Silas Bolden doing a block on the safety. Pleased with uh, Dylan Black and Luke Losher on the punt thing, talking about special teams, first game issues. They were they were really sharp. Run game was really controlled a lot at the line of scrimmage by our D line. You know, Coach Lange Suano does a great job with those guys, and it was really really good to see because I do think that's a good football team in Boise State. Appreciate the crowd too. The crowd, you know, sold out. I thought the energy was awesome. Didn't totally know exactly game one how was it going to feel. It felt great. Uh, the atmosphere was awesome and. Beaver Nation showing out like that. But we all know we're, uh, we're not playing at home this week, and we're going to a place that's tough to play. I got a bunch of respect also for this program, especially that head coach over there, Jeff Tedford. Got the opportunity to work with him for a year. Uh, really good man, sharp football mind. They got some good players. Starts again with the quarterback. Got some talent around them, and we know it's going to be a tremendous, tremendous challenge down there in Fresno. Questions? Not trying to tee up excuses for you, but a couple I want to ask you about. With the, with the defense, um, in once they changed quarterbacks, how much of that was you just didn't really prepare for, for that guy? And he's so much different than Hank Bachmeyer. How much of that was just had you game plan for maybe things are a little different out there? Yeah, there's no question the game plan was different. Uh, not preparing uh, – for a quarterback to extend the play like that, quarterback to pull the ball as much on the, in the run game. But I go back, you got to be able to make adjustments, and it did. We needed to change our rush angles. We needed to know accountability for the quarterback, and different guy got in the game, and we got to be able to adjust. And then offensively in the second half, I just kind of felt like maybe you guys weren't sure whether to stomp on the gas or be conservative and it's sort of were you, did you feel like you guys were kind of in the middle there where you just really didn't you haven't been in that situation where you're up 24 nothing and yeah I, the third quarter we're, we weren't changing a bunch of mentality we're still going to try to run the ball and the penalty thing killed us the you know got it behind the chains a bunch of times turnover piece we turned it over in the first minute and 20 seconds chance throws trying to throw the ball away doesn't get out of bounds um and so it was not good. I don't put any of that on oh, how what style of play we wanted. Third quarter was all us butchering things. What what was your take on the entire running game for the for the four quarters? It, it wasn't Purdue, but it wasn't it wasn't like what we'd seen from mm -hmm. last year. Yeah, I think one Boise's good on defense against the run. They'd been good. They're physical. Seven, the inside backer, I thought played really well, made some issues for us in the backfield. So we want to give them some credit. I think we weren't clean enough to overcome some of the penalty in. We miss ID'd a couple of times. We put the ball on the ground. And so, look, it, was it awful game one? I wouldn't call it that, but we definitely want to have more to us. The um, you've, you've been to Fresno as a player and a coach. What, what's been your experience in both in both situations? It hadn't been very good. I mean, we're going down there and got beat. Uh, remember it vividly as a player. Was a graduate assistant here. Uh, second year, got down there and got beat. 
a couple of times with the Vandals, got beat. I was at Boise, go there, got beat. Um, it's a tough place to play. It's a good football team, awesome atmosphere. That crowd will be into it. I bet the place is going to be packed. The heat, a lot of times you're playing. I mean, that's something we're going to have to handle. I think it's hot, well over 100 degrees today and this week. So create some problems. Is there, is there anything unique about about the atmosphere there that maybe you don't run into too much at other places? Uh, you, you know, fans are energized. They're a good team. They play well at home. So I don't think that's dramatically different than some of the best places home field advantage-wise. Following Nick's question about the running game, just from a different angle, how do you think the, the line graded out? I thought they passed protected really well. Um, they could clean up some things in the run game. Some of that's too – tight ends along with it, the back on his track. We missed a couple of a couple of cuts there. And, again, in some of this, that's week one, right, your first time out there doing it. But across the board, there's things to, to clean up. Was lighting okay on the, the, the other side? Didn't, didn't notice an yeah. issue with it, no. Yeah. Uh, Jake Hayner is obviously a challenge. What, what sticks out about him when you, when you see him play and the challenge he presents for you guys? Well, it starts with his arm talent. He can throw it and make all the throws accurate. Uh, you know the kid well, tough, good decision maker, won't back down to anything. Um, and, you know, he's played a lot. Uh, this guy's uh, – and he's got guys to throw it to. He's got – I know the coaches over there schematically, they're going to be on it. Um, so he's in a good situation, really accurate, that uh, he can be really dangerous. And I know last year was last year, but uh, the discrepancy of playing at home and how well you guys did at Reeser as opposed to on the road, what do you think was the biggest thing in that, and, and how has that been addressed heading into this one? Yeah, we've, uh, you try to learn from each season, obviously the good and the bad. Um, again, I go back to we've got an experienced group that hopefully have learned from last year in regards to – I don't think our approach during practice was was off last year. I just think it came down to this – it isn't going to be easy. It's not easy to win on the road. You've got to win the game in the second half, fourth quarter, and we've got to do that better. Um, obviously, big expectations for Luke Musgrave coming into this season, and in that first half, he really you know, had a good connection with Chance. Good to see that turn from an expectation to a reality. Yeah, no question. It was good to see because he's a good player, can be explosive. Got him the ball early, which was intentional. First play of the game, got him, got him a touch, and then he really got his kick started on the first touchdown pass, which was a contested play. Now, this wasn't just like wide open in stride. This guy made a nice catch with it. Had a couple other ones that were, they were big, and so he needs to be a part. If we can continue to make him a factor, I think it helps out everybody else. The, uh, the the ball skills from your defensive backs and the guys that were getting the interceptions, obviously that some of that comes from just training off season. Mm -hmm. well, is there anything else that's really improved that area? Because there was a couple of them. The, the right interception, that was a really nice pick. And yep. Grant's was a pretty nice one. Oh, I think about one being in the correct position in regards to like Grant. He's in the deep half, but he's watching – uh, the quarterback and being in the correct spot. Mm -hmm. Alex Austin's was the most impressive. His receiver, you know, cuts loose, and so he's supposed to get back there. He does it exactly right, sprints back there, and then has his right, eyes in the right space. So those guys, again, uh, have played a lot, and they did a lot of good things on Saturday. Statistically, not a lot of sacks in this game. Did you feel like the pressure on the quarterback was pretty good? I th I did, especially when early on when Bachmeyer was in there, and the, our plan was to keep him, you know, and just push the pocket there. I think he, you know, he, the Jaden Grant interceptions forced because of the pressure. We got the fumble on the other one, so was pleased with that. Now, flip the script. Different quarterback comes into the game. We got to adjust our rush lanes. I should know the answer to this, but when when did you work with Jeff? 2016 at UW, oh, okay. um, he was a kind of analyst, quality control. He was a great year with the with the guy. Learned a bunch. What, what, I mean, what do you what, what do you know about him? And I mean, you guys are you guys friendly or oh close yeah, or? yeah. I try to pick his brain anytime I'm around him. Saw him down in uh, May at meetings. Talked to talked to him for a while. Um, the guy's been sharp. Uh, I mean, I can remember. I think it was my first year at Idaho, my first year full-time coaching as a quarterback coach, actually going down to Cal. He's the head coach, and he had been at Oregon, and, you know, I'd been here playing and all that. The guy spent like two and a half hours with me just talking quarterback play when I was first-year coach trying to help. Good, good man for this business. 
There wasn't anybody that seemed apparent in terms of injuries Saturday, but how did you come out? Yeah, pretty clean. Definitely some bumps, bruises. Guys, you know, play a football game and, and got that, but nothing, uh, nothing currently that's going to impact this Saturday. Jonathan, what are some of the the aspects of Jeff Tedford's teams offensively through the years? Just the concepts and the things you've seen from him uh, over his long coaching run. Yeah, uh, the guy can identify ways to attack a defense. And so that goes back to the dis discipline or the coverage and tef techniques. He's just been around the game a long time. Obviously knows how to coach the quarterback, has great quarterback play. Every stop, every stop he's made. Um, and he's got a good staff over there. I mean, Kirby Moore now, I've worked with Kirby as well, the offensive coordinator. That guy is sharp, uh, knows the game, and so we got to be prepared for a big-time game player. Your running game in the second half, even though I, I don't know how you felt that all went, some drives stalled out, but it felt like early in that third quarter you were getting some push and some holes and different backs doing yep. good things were you yep. somewhat pleased with about about that in the second half uh, yeah we had some good plays i mean we just weren't able to sustain it for a long period of time i think there was a couple of series even the first series had two carries i think two first downs and then we throw an interception uh later in the third quarter you know two carries good trey low gets down and then again we got penalties for dropping the ball um we get the double pass down to the two yard line. We go back another twenty yards. I mean, it's that kind of thing. We gotta, we gotta clean up. The double pass, uh, Dunmore. It, was he a quarterback in high school? I don't know anything about him, but that was a pretty good. throw. That was a good throw, and because he's throwing it from outside the hash, forty yards to the opposite. I mean, outside shoulder to Trey Low. I mean, that was a dime, big time throw. I'm not aware of any quarterback history the guy's got. Um, Really, the one is Fence. Coach Fence knew that the guy could make a throw, and he did. Um, shoot, I forgot what I was going to ask. I do know. I, I did, did want to ask. There was another big game this weekend. With the one last night, you're talking Florida State LSU. No, How about no, that? No. <laughs> CV. Oh, yeah. Yeah. JVCV went down uh, last Thursday, so we're going to get back back next week it was fun to see though i got to catch a little bit of it oh i know what i was gonna so first half there's there obviously that was, that was a pretty good play by your team mm -hmm. and you, you're kind of tied up with you know the play calling and whatnot but was there ever a moment where you just took a moment and went we're pretty good or or, or did you did you kind of surprised at what you were seeing a little bit or anything well, like no, that? No, especially on defense, the, it felt good, the run game. These guys could run the ball and our, our establishment of the line of scrimmage. Uh, you know, going in halftime, it's 24 nothing. You're looking at the stats. But, again, always as the coach, it's like this, this game's a long football game. Told the team on um, – on yet yesterday, I mean, it's we got the ball third and ten. We got a ten point lead. There's about twelve minutes left in this game, and we get a pass interference, and that gives us the opportunity for Coletto to crease. I mean, this thing is in the balance till the fourth quarter. Okay.